Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps and sibs, you've heard this intro before. You know what it is. It's a Mac Life number one pimp podcast here in the world. We're back for episode number 30. We have a lot to go over today, but if you're new to my channel and you haven't heard this before, okay, we run over absolutely everything to do with OnlyFans, from being a creator yourself and making more money, okay, all the way to becoming a manager, learning how to manage girls, learning how to make shit tons of money by managing girls' OnlyFans accounts. Now, in the future, OnlyFans might not exist. <gasps> no. <gasps> OnlyFans might disappear. But the sex industry as a whole, okay, and the ability to monetize girls and sell content, which is essentially all we're doing, will always be around. There will be enhanced versions of it, which just improves the amount of money we can make. I.e. the metaverse is coming. Eventually, I'll own a digital brothel, the king of digital brothels, all my girls will be uploaded into the metaverse where CD guys can put their haptic gloves on and their little fleshlights and go to absolute town and pay a premium in thousands of dollars worth of Ethereum or mana or whatever else we want to take at that time. And then it will instantly be converted back to fiat currency and paid out 50 to the girls and 50% to myself. Exciting. In today's video, we have a, a lot to go over. I like to add this in every few days. I like to add in a word of the day. So while you're watching these podcasts, you also get to learn a word. And if you already know the word, it doesn't matter. It just gets to be brought back to the forefront of your consciousness so that you can use it more. Today's word of the day is esoteric or esoteric, okay? It basically means information that is allowed to a select or small group of individuals. For example... Um, you know, eso esoteric information about gardening was only known by this small group of botanists, okay? Esoteric. The information that you're going to find in this is very esoterical and is select to only you who who is going to become a uh, fantastic OnlyFans manager or grow your account. We have a few strategies that we're going over today. The second topic will be going over that. But the first topic that I want to bring up today is everyone wants to know how the ad spend's running. If you watch back a few podcasts ago, uh, you'll you'll uh, see that the plan for onboarding new girls was quite simple. I'm going to bring on 10 new girls. I'm going to spend $250 a day in ads, which is nothing, over the space of four days. And at minimum, that should bring me on one girl pulling in 10K a month, okay? Which is 5K US at, on a 50-50 split, 7K profit to myself, which is a 7X ROI from month one, assuming we only brought on one girl. Now, in classic... Facebook fashion. Facebook decided to allow the ads to go through review at nine o'clock at night, leaving it with three hours of the day to spend $250, which it did. Facebook will always do that shit. Always. Facebook has a way, I swear the algorithms work in a way that do that shit. It just makes them more money. It means they have to put out less shit to be seen by eyeballs. Essentially sticking you, giving you the short stick, but we don't care. We're, we're smarter than Facebook here. So... Essentially, it spent 250 last night in the space of three hours. So far today, it's spent 150. So it puts us at around 400 in ad spend out of our $1,000 budget. What have we got so far for $400? We have got seven or eight girls that are really keen. We've, I've obviously got a lot more than that. Message-wise, I think I've had maybe 40 to 50 messages, okay, for, the, for that amount of spend. So around $10 a message. Um... The, the actual ad set level doesn't reflect that. And because of the iOS tracking, it's not tracking some people who have opted out. But we're around $10 a message um, for girls. And they are filtered. I, I basically said only girls that are doing 10K. Out of that, we've branched down to seven or eight girls that are doing over 10K. Some are doing, you know, six or 7K. But the seven or eight are doing uh, over 10K. They're hyper keen. They're ready to go. They're ready to sign the contracts. They know about the 50-50. They're ready for absolutely everything. So essentially, I could take on uh, those girls. I have uh, girls also who have messaged that are doing 20, 30K a month um, that are also keen on the 50-50 on the management. So I like to be really, really realistic though. And I'm going to stick with the goal of one girl per $1,000 in ad spend. So assuming that none of these girls reply to the contracts after that and never get signed, we never get their account details. You know, I'm still only 40% of the way through the ad budget. So assuming that, let's just say, you know, I'm getting a message per $10. I'm going to have 100 applications. 
per 100 application, I want one girl, okay? And we're not even talking about the girls doing 20, 30K. I want one girl doing 10K USD a month. We already know what that is. That's a 7X return on our ad spend instantly. Instantly, 7X from month one. And that's not including the amount of money we're gonna make in the messaging, which is where 90% of the revenue comes from. Now to top that off, Every girl that comes on board that is essentially earning this much money already already has uh, quite a good social following. So we're able to cross promote and build up uh, my other girls that are already on board too. The process has taken a little bit longer than I'd like, but I'd rather do things correct. And I'm happy to spend more time building it up and doing it correctly. Because for me, I'm not worried about time. There's no stress for time. I already have a shit ton of money. I already have a lot of capital to sit and do what I want. I'll rather do it correctly. And that information, okay, and that knowledge and insight comes from Alex Hormozzi's video. And he said, those who become really wealthy, it's it looks like speed, okay? It looks like they're doing a lot of stuff on, on the outside. It's perceived as speed, but it's really just about making the correct decisions. Or if you inverse that, it's really just about making less of the wrong decisions that take you down the wrong path. Now, I know when you do something wrong, you get to learn from it, da-da-da-da-da, but wouldn't it be easier if we just did everything right? So taking more time and a slower approach to making sure that I make the right decision or putting the odds more in my favor to make the right decision is just a better strategic play long term. And it's working out so far this year. Now, before I get into the other ones, I want to actually skip to one of the topics down here because it feeds on so well. It's that 90% of the, of the competitors this year that have decided to launch a business or come into this space or grow their own OnlyFans account or whatever it is, if you're here listening to this today, we're 18 days into 18 days into the new year, had to check. We're 18 days into the new year and 90% of the people have faded out. They've switched niches, they've trend dropped, they've told me it doesn't work for them, they've tried, they've given up, they've easy. This is why it's easy to succeed in business. It's really about picking one path, okay, and then being diligent on that path and then also being tenacious and sticking with it for a long period of time. And when you do, you become one of the few esoteric people of that group. I threw it in there. Now, the second topic that I want to talk about, this is more directly with uh, OnlyFans itself, okay? And this is something I'll be testing, so it's another experiment. As you can see, you know, I run a fuck ton of experiments. And this is why people like to watch out videos um, and find out information and how do people always find this new stuff? How to because I run so many experiments, I might run 10 and only one works, but that one, okay, the rewards from that will be 100x. So I haven't really lost out. That's why I love constantly testing. And it's fun. Innovation is, is key as well. Now, this isn't anything new, but this is just new for this niche, okay? So you can buy Instagram theme pages. It's something I've actually never personally done yet. I haven't done it for any of my brands or any of my businesses, but I was chatting with Emma yesterday, who's one of my uh, business partners. And we're basically chatting and she's done it for TikTok and had incredible results there. So I'm looking through and essentially I don't want to buy from a third party merchant because most likely those accounts are just, you know, got some fake followers or I don't even know how they do it. They'll build out a, a thing with bots or whatever, make it look real and then sell them off for a premium. I instead want to look for Instagram accounts personally that I know have good engagement, this, 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 this have a couple hundred thousand subscribers and then reach out and, and offer to buy their page off them for, you know, five to $10,000. Now, why would I do this? Well, rather than paying for shout outs from that page, if I can see that it's constantly got good engagement, I can go ahead and purchase this page, okay? I can just mimic all the posts that they already have and essentially set up a year's worth of content to mimic so that the growth cycle will continue. But then I can promote my girls only fans from that account. Now, the account niche that I'll be looking for will obviously be like beauty bloggers, you know, fitness or any like sexy pages with sexy girls that already has that sort of community around it. So that is my idea. I'm going to reach out. I'll let you know how I go. I'm going to search for some accounts that have a couple hundred thousand followers, attempt to purchase them and then push my girls through the stories there every day with sticker taps as well as change the link in the bio to the link tree with all my girls, um, as well as help build up my Mac Mansion page by cross promoting constantly. So that is, that is one of the plans that I'm undertaking for promotion and it's more long-term. It's easier to win when you can focus long-term, like I said, and you have capital in. If you don't, you have to go through the dirty work. You have to go through the, twen the twenches. Invisalign's killing me. You have to go through the trenches to be able to get to that stage, okay? You have to do the grueling long cold calls, the DMs, the cold outreach. You don't get to skip that shit. 
But that's what really builds. And then once you build a bit of momentum, a bit of capital on your side, then you can start playing the more long-term game. You can make better choices. You don't have to put in as much manual work yourself each day because you're like, okay, the manual work is just me searching and using my brain for thinking time. And your decisions become better. And, and as a result of that, the amount of money you make becomes a lot better too. Now, this really also feeds down to my bottom point. It, it's like we've inverted it all today. Giving yourself time to think is probably the most crucial skill. And I'm reading a new book um, about Mark Boris. He is uh, the founder of Yellow Brick Road here in Australia. Okay, a big um, investment in banking in the, in the banking sector is how he built his name. And essentially, you know, he's worth a couple hundred million dollars net worth. Um, and essentially, he reiterated that exact same point. That one of the main things is that he spends time to think. That time to think constantly, what's something new I can test and tweak? How can I improve on my current systems? How can I do this? That's how you get ahead. When 90% of people that own small businesses, okay, they are pretty much just employees to their own business. They don't get any extra freedom. In fact, rather than owning a shitty little small business that's open, I would rather just work for someone, have a guaranteed wage, have less stress, know that the income's coming in. There's nothing wrong with working a nine to five and I would much rather do that than run a small local shop. The reason being because you're stuck in a monotonous routine and you don't really give yourself time to think creatively. And as well as that, it offers a, it, you have to take on a lot more risk when you think creatively, as well as you don't really have much time because you're constantly doing this small business monotonous tasks. So brick and mortar is definitely not the way um, in today's climate. If you're building a business, make sure that you're doing it online. Make sure that you've brought your cost of living down so that you can give yourself time to think. And it's funny, when I speak to a lot of successful people, they've pretty much all done the exact same thing. I took an entire year off, okay? And I sat and I was blessed that my mum let me live with her when I lost my job when I was younger in my early 20s. And it's funny to say early 20s being younger now, that's fucking weird. And I just sat on the couch for an entire year. I ordered 100 business books and all I did was read books for an entire year. An entire year. I'm not kidding. I've read, you know, over seven, eight hundred books on psychology, business marketing, and that's not an exaggeration. Um, my my biggest recommendation for reading is to read <clears throat> Tony Buzan's Speed Reading book. It's one of the best books I've ever read. It talks about information retention. It talks about improving your ability to, you know, speed read essentially or uh, read faster, but also retain more information. That's the most important thing. And it talks about that from a few different standpoints, how we view the page, the optimal times for reading, our motivation levels, um, being able to you know, put that into a story that we can then easily explain, as well as how the eye operates to absorb more information and more stimulus based on the angle of a book and what we use to block the page. So there's a lot, there's a lot of nerdy shit there. You're like, oh my God, he's the number one pimp. He pimps out women. He does outrageous shit, but he's also highly intellectual. Oh my God, what a mix. What a mix. Now, on top of that, as I said, connections pay off um, always. Having the right connections, having the right people in place always pays off. I've been helping Emma um, with different calls each day, talking about different promotion strategies that are working, da 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 da. She's gone out, leveraged her connections from a, a lady that she knows, and this lady essentially paid 20 grand for her account to be marketed uh, on OnlyFans. And this isn't the one that we ta we've taken on last month. This is a whole new lady. She paid a different company 20K to do the marketing. They're absolutely dismal. They haven't launched anything. She wasn't happy. She got the 20K back and uh, we've essentially offered her the service she's coming on board with us from tomorrow. So Emma's gone out and made an extra uh, 10K for the month. So if anyone's like, how does this motherfucker continue to make money, especially in operational phases or the setup? I have a few girls on board, but you know, there's constant streams of money coming from everywhere. Reoccurring subscriptions from my previous companies. You know, I have fucking obviously high ticket packages, a little bit of personal mentoring, which is more me giving out than getting in. Once you build momentum, okay, once you build traction, you are really just in the in the flow of the universe. You have positioned yourself in the crux nicely and you just get to enjoy the wave, really. You really do. Uh, and as long as you show up each day, that momentum never dies. As long as you show up, you put in the work, you're gonna continue to stay. If you don't have it yet, it's the hardest thing to do is build momentum. Go out there and build momentum. Put time in, put effort in. Same as this. Like, here I am, been talking to you directly for 15 minutes. I've taken time to plan out what I wanna talk about on YouTube each day. And if you look at the actual direct result of what I'm getting paid immediately from YouTube, it's like $14 a day. 
who would go and put in all this time and effort to work for $14 a day. But I understand the power of this media long form because I can look 10 years from now as this podcast 10 years from now has built to over you know a million subscribers and I've given out information for over 10 years building a following. When I do ask for something, which I, I, I really feel you never need to ask for anything, but when I do ask for something, I have that much good motion on my side. I have that much um, movement in my favor. Inertia is the word I was searching for. And a really cool quote actually popped up with that feed eradicator app that I use that I recommended that removes, you know, YouTube feeds. Like if I click YouTube homepage, there's nothing, nothing on Facebook, nothing on Instagram. I can only access, ah, access the features that I need. It pops up a little quote each time. I can't remember the actual author, but the quote itself was, even if I knew that the whole world would crumble tomorrow, I would still plant my apple tree seed today. And that's very cool. It made me think it's a very stoic quote of, you know, it's not very Epicurean at all. It's not like if you knew the world was going to um, burn tomorrow, most people would go nuts and party and rave. But the, the cool quote of the Stoic is, you know, even if I knew the entire world was going to crumble tomorrow, I would still plant my apple tree seed today. And I guess you can reflect on that in a few different ways. Either the fact that you have such a strong belief that there will be more, or maybe it's a strong belief that even if the whole world crumbles, you have given, you know, you have given back and there's a way that there's a chance that that will help someone else in the future. There's a few ways you can interpret it, but it's just a cool quote as well. It wasn't even on the list, but it's there. So that topic was yet made uh, 10K today or 10K tomorrow or whenever the fuck it comes in, I don't know. And I'll run the exact same type of campaign that we have going for this previous lady. At this rate, you know, it looks like we're bringing on uh, one client a month. I'm not really doing any of the outreach. It's just word of mouth. But 10K each between me and Emma is, that's another 120K a year right there. So... 120k. Thank you. <laughs> this is the money show as well, baby. Now, I was talking about a YouTube video intro and the way that I uh, plan on growing this YouTube channel very quickly. Essentially, I'm going to pop a uh, intro channel video here and then run ads to that, which will add social proofing as well as a shit ton of subscribers because the video is short, concise, uh, and has a very clear call to action. It's very chetka. It's very clear. Okay. And it has a, a very unique call to action. That should get people hooked. So um, I decided not to edit that video myself. Obviously, my editing skills are abysmal. So I've sent that off to a guy on Fiverr. I'm just waiting for his reply on the quote. He's had over a thousand orders. His, his video editing looks absolutely insane. It's not really a big video. You know, in total, it should be under a minute, minute and a half. So it shouldn't cost too much, but then it'll, it'll definitely pay its dues. Now, there was a lady like that commented yesterday, and thank you for the comment. She's asking, why do you constantly tap your keyboard? And I replied to her, but it's a habit from being on my laptop. And I know you can change this in the settings. I just don't do it for some reason. Um, essentially, I used to upload videos to my laptop, not my desktop, because I travel a lot and I move around a lot on my laptop. While I'm uploading a video, if the screen would turn off, the uploading would stop. So I'm constantly used to tapping the keyboard to keep the screen active so that the video continues to upload. And I know you can change the settings, which I should do, but I build a habit. So that's the habit, baby. What else? Ah, yeah. You just want to know about the $600 uh, Google panel order that I put in on Fiverr yesterday. Now, potentially a scam. Everyone's... Everyone was uh, messaging me on Instagram like, bro, I'm pretty sure you got scammed. You know, it's worth a couple thousand dollars. I'm actually logging on here now because he's replied. So this is what the package included or, or this is what essentially I asked for, which was promised, but it's already changed. I said, I want the Google knowledge panel 100%. That's the, the reason. But I also want the Wikipedia page. We did some back and forth with the pricing. Um, I agreed for 400 whatever US, which ended up being 600 something AUD or 580 AUD, 600 after the Fiverr costs. And I got the, the panel as well as a Wikipedia page. Now, when I reached out to the guy today, I said, just want to make sure that my knowledge panel says the Mac Life, not Mackenzie Thompson, because I want my I want when people search the Mac Life that to populate the knowledge panel. I'm not sure if you can do two things. If you can, great, but essentially I want it to say the Mac Life. Now, when I reached out and said that today, he said, okay, I have urgent discussion with you. You want to create wiki page. There are many type wiki 
Itia, Wiki Alpha, Wikimedia, Media Wiki, Wiki News, Wiki Wiktionary, Wiki Source, Wiki University, Wiki Data. He said, I think best for IG verification is Wiki Alpha. I did some quick research and it is essentially a rip-off site of Wikipedia. It is not Wikipedia at all. It's not affiliated with Wikipedia. And I said, I need a Wikipedia if possible, brother. This was my reply. And remember, this is what I have paid for. I paid for a Wikipedia. Usually Wikipedia not possible for everyone. Talked about in top newspaper, media, every day, or very popular person. Am I not a very popular person? Um, only their Wikipedia pages. If someone create Wikipedia page, it will stop in two to three days. You can't use that. I said, okay, whatever you recommend then, bro. The most important thing is we get the full knowledge panel. Now, this doesn't give me much confidence, okay? He said, I hope I can give you better service as per your demand. I'm going to say just making sure you get to see this live. Mac in action. Just making sure the uh, Google knowledge, my God, can I not type today? The Google knowledge panel is 100% guaranteed. Now I've, I've already said this twice, but the, con the, the deal has already changed. And this is what really gives, and, and shout out, unfortunately, he's from Bangladesh. This is what gives those people a bad name is the ones that aren't scammers, their business, uh, the way they conduct business in general, and I apologize if this is you, you're from Bangladesh and you treat and carry yourself with different morals, but the general consensus or what I've found with every person that I've ever dealt with from Bangladesh is they'll either scam you, number one, completely, they will disappear as soon as they've got the money and try and keep the, keep the funds, or... They will change the package details after ordering. Oh no, this is better. Oh, I can do this. Oh, trust me, bro. This for you, better. And really, it's a very poor way to do business. I like to over-deliver, always. Because when you over-deliver, people go out and they talk about you and it brings positive word of mouth. That's why these guys are always constantly desperate and chasing down business is because when they finally get given the chance, okay, they cannot deliver on their promises and they make changes and they make adjustments and I don't know, it must just be a cultural thing over there for them to do that because the money is so important and so needed urgently. It is needed to survive urgently that they operate from a place of scarcity. And you might say, oh, you're lucky, Mac. You have money. You don't have to operate from scarcity. Motherfucker, I come from nothing. Remember that. I come from dirt. I come from... Yes, my, my father is extremely rich now, but that has only uh, come to fruition in, in the last you know five to 10 years as he has built himself... Growing up, my family was extremely poor. I used to have to walk. My mum used to give me money for the school bus and I didn't want to ask for more because I had to catch two buses. I had to catch one into town and the second one, I had to catch an additional bus to get to school, which was more, more money. I didn't want to ask my mum for that money. So I used to catch the bus in and then walk the remaining 5Ks to the school, okay? Or catch it all the one way and walk 10Ks home. Very quickly, I learned the importance of money and I started, this is an extra story for you. I started selling lollies. So I went to bonbons. I saved up my money for a few days by walking there and back. I was lucky that I had a good friend who lived close as well and decided to do it with me. We walked there and back completely to school. Um, 10Ks, 10Ks there, 10Ks back. Legitimately 10Ks from where I live. That's no, no joke. To get to school and then I'm fucked by the time I get to school. I saved up the money for a few days that my mum was giving me for the bus. And then I went to this little lolly store called Bonbons. Shout out Bonbons for the, one of the start of my entre entrepreneurial uh, careers. I, I bought a shit ton of lollies, okay? And then I went to school and started selling them for more. And that's where I learned so much about business. I learned people saying, why would I pay for that when I could go to Bonbons? And that's how I learned about leverage. I said, yeah, motherfucker, you can. Go there after school. Don't enjoy this shit now then. I'm gonna, we're gonna all enjoy it now. Okay, how much? <laughs> leverage, baby. That's what leverage is. Supply and demand. The fact that I have something, okay, in short supply, there is a large demand for it and you cannot access it, okay? And then eventually the products changed and I learned about um, learning about people's emotions as well. Some of the older kids that were into, into fucking bitches, but they were still too nervous to go ahead and uh, purchase condoms themselves. So I started going to the pharmacy each morning 
purchasing boxes of condoms and then selling them individually nearly at the price of what it was for a box. So a box was like 10 bucks and I was selling one for $5. And then when I sold one for $5, kids from my school from grade nine, and it was kind of, I was like kind of the hidden dealer of condoms. It was kind of discreet because people didn't, people didn't want to be known that they were buying condoms because then it looks like they're too nervous to go get them themselves. So it was, it was kind of very discreet. It was the discreet condom market. But... What I did as well was then I learned about scarcity, urgency, all these other things, pressure selling. So when people would um, say, yeah, yeah, I want a condom, whatever, I would say, bro, what if it breaks? You might need two. Do you really want it, the risk of ruining your night if it breaks? Oh, fuck, give me two then. $10. There's the whole box back. And now the rest, you know, the other four remaining in the pack, that were all profit, baby, 20 bucks a pop. And that allowed me to uh, upgrade to to understand what comfort was as well. I could catch the bus completely to school from money that I was making myself. I could see the um, the fruit of my labor, okay? Being smart with money and I could see the fruit of my labor being able to do things. And then it got to the point where I was buying my lunch at school every single day. And my mom, I was like, no, no, I'll handle lunch. And she's like, how are you doing it? And I was like, well, I'm selling shit at school. And she was super impressed. And it uh, allowed me to not have to take lunch from home each day, which I knew at the time would, would help my mom cut costs. And plus, it allowed me to understand uh, different reactions from people. Everyone's like, how are you able to afford, for, like, how are you paying for lunch every single day from the canteen? How are you, you know, bringing Subway for brekkie every single day? You come from a poor family, da, 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 da. Yeah, but I understand the power of hustle, the power of doing it correctly. So being from a poor up upbringing is actually uh, extremely advantageous when you don't like poverty. When you, when you do not like poverty and you can understand, and, and we're not we're an extremely poor, but when you can understand the excess struggles that come from it, okay, you, you gain um, very advantageous skills. So that was an extra story that wasn't even on the list. We have gotten carried away today. These potties were around 18 to 20 minutes. They're bumping up now. They're like 25, 30, but <clears throat> as a bonus, the watch time has also increased. That cough was not the... The fruit 19. I'm not going to use the word, okay? Because I feel it's going to affect the uh, the channel. So that cough was not from the fruit, okay? The delicious little fruit 19. However, it's funny. Every single person I know around me is getting it and they've all had their... And if you're like, have you not? No, I haven't yet. Okay, I'm waiting for um, a certain type to become available. I'm trying not to use keywords. I'm waiting for a certain type to become available in Australia. If it was up to me, you know, personally, I wouldn't even have it. And a lot of people, whether, whether you agree with that or not, if you watch my channel and you don't agree with that, that doesn't matter. We can have differences in opinions, okay? You can still learn some shit about how to make money. So that shouldn't really change anything. And if it does, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> no, honestly, though, uh, it's funny. Everyone around me is getting sick and they've all had the juice. Um, I haven't caught the fruit and I haven't had the juice. But I do have a special um, bit of juice for you that I've used and it will stop you from getting sick a lot, okay? Number one is, is understanding the uh, power of the mind. It can heal pretty much anything in the body. But number two, and this, this also helps to strengthen the mind but has some good physiological effects as well, is a cold shower. I have a cold shower every single day, every morning, whether it's the, the, the hottest day in summer or the coldest day in winter. Um, I enjoy a nice little warm shower first when I wake up and then I flip it to cold. It doesn't matter how long I'm in there. People say, is one to two minutes best? What's optimal? 30 seconds. It doesn't matter. I don't count the time. It's just about the fact that I do it every single day. Um, since I've done that, I haven't been sick, okay? You know, I've had days where I'm a little bit tired or a little bit off, just like everyone, and I, I let the body rest or I've been hungover for sure, that's for sure. Hungover is fucking self-induced sickness. But cold showers will significantly improve your health and, you know, there's the science behind that is the, the breathing causes higher oxygenation levels, which helps to filter your blood and do a whole range of different shit. The oxygen saturation levels help. But essentially, start having cold showers, okay? There's, there's an extra bonus. None of this shit is on here. So how am I coming up with it? Um, and the last topic, I guess, of the day will have to be... You know what? We're going to go with this one. Because I feel this is important in today's society and I don't really talk about it enough. Men, the men that are watching this, please, I hope some of you are on my side. The, the men of this generation are becoming weak. 
extremely weak. You know, we're not pushing ourselves mentally. We're not, uh, you know, trying to trying to do things that improve us. And on top of that, we're conforming. We're being told what to do. Yes, sir. We put our head down. Our fucking shoulders are slumped over. We're not carrying ourselves in a way that, uh, you know, gets feedback from others. And, and now, as soon as you do even one thing that's like that, you're labeled as cocky. And the problem is most dudes want to be concealed and they want to be seen as humble. And they take that too far to the extreme where they become little bitches. Too many of the men in today's society are little bitches. They do not understand how to speak to people, carry themselves. They don't have a purpose themselves, okay? They do not do combat training. Combat training is, is uh, empirical. I want to use that word if it's done correctly. Empirical for men. It is so important that every man uh, does some form of combat training. Men, what are you doing? Get out there, dress well, present yourself well, carry yourself well, move well, speak with purpose, have a direction for fuck's sake. It's not about this like this this weird culture online like you need to you know, tell women they must be doing this for you and that, you know, you need to do like these weird little sleazy tactics from skinny little dudes that fucking have never done any of this shit themselves and you need to hold eye contact for 15 seconds. No, bro, just man the fuck up. We need some more real men in today's society. So that's it. That's all I have for today. It was all coming along nicely. They're up to week 10. They're still pretty shit, like my teeth. But uh, they're getting better, and once they're all perfectly aligned, they'll be veneered. They'll be like these motherfuckers in the back. They will be so fucking white. This tooth's got to come out and around. It was actually so far tucked behind before I didn't even realize. Like I thought my top teeth were fine until I went to the dentist, and he used the word that still haunts my mind. He's like, "Bro, your teeth are higgledy piggledy. You never." Ever want to hear your teeth described as higgledy piggledy? Okay, it's instantly I was like, bro, you've sold me. You don't need to say anything else. Here's full price for the Invisalign. You got me good. You use the word higgledy piggledy to describe my teeth. I'm sold, bro. Let's do it. Let's go. If your teeth are higgledy piggledy, I recommend Invisalign. Um, but if they're not too bad, okay, and you could get them veneered without needing them crowned, just fly to Turkey and get them veneered. That's still my end goal. So I guess the added benefits from Invisalign is that it's healthier for my mouth to become this way because the teeth behind will still be easier to clean and brush and do all that stuff. Oral hygiene will be better and gum health is um, closely related with a whole range of different things, especially heart health and gum health. They have a, a very um, close connection. But yeah, on top of that, I guess the benefit is increased jawline and some other shit. So that's it for today, my little Chilovix. Спасибо за смотрел и до скорого. Пока.